Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. I don't understand the hatred that Zach Eady gets. Like I get where Indiana fans are not going to love this dude. I get how Big Ten fans might be like, yeah, fuck this guy, right? But I don't understand why the nation at large is like pushing back on a kid that is one, one of the most wonderful stories that we have in college basketball. He didn't start playing until he was 15, ends up being back-to-back -back national player of the year, Get, takes a team from losing in the first round to a Final Four uh, in his second season. He is a guy that is nothing but generous with his time. He is one of the – Goodman, you know him better than both of us. One of the yeah. best kids that you're going to find yeah. when it comes to, like, how good he is. There's absolutely no ego there when you're dealing with him. And – the idea that people don't like him just because he's so good and so big and so strong and it's impossible to stop him without fouling him, it's just like – it's baffling to me, man. I want to celebrate it. I want to celebrate watching him thrive. I, and he I doesn't, got my he doesn't right talk now, trash. Man. Listen, he doesn't really talk trash. He rarely gets mad at the officials. Like you said, off the court, he's about as good as it gets. Um I don't get it either, but I think, again, it's just, you know, opposing teams getting frustrated because they feel like he gets every call. And, yeah, he gets some, but trust me, he's on the, the, the other side of it as well. He doesn't get a ton of them, uh, probably more than 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 on the on the other end of it. So I, I don't get well, it. Let's, let's, it let's pisses me that. off. I want to talk about that, Jeff. I'm, or, or, Randolph, I want to go to you because you've coached and you played and you probably have a better feel than Jeff and I do on this. I feel like – Look, obviously there were what was it, 25 fouls called against Tennessee, 12, 12 fouls called against Purdue today. I think Zach Eady drew it was like 12 or 13 fouls himself. I feel like that is just the byproduct of having a guy that is seven foot four, that is 300 pounds, that is exceptionally strong and coordinated when it comes to being able to move his body. Like most seven footers can't move the way that he moves in terms of like how smooth he is. And when you put all that together, it's borderline impossible to stop. And the only way to do it is to just kind of like hang off of him. It's like imagine if you're a little brother trying to stop your big brother in the post. It's basically impossible to do without fouling. And then throwing the fact that they're throwing the ball into the paint to him every single time with the goal of either getting fouled or making a layup. Like you run the ball through Dalton Connect. He's not trying to get to the line. He's trying to hit a jumper. Who's going to get fouled more? Like the, the idea that there's this like – this conspiracy to put Zach Eady on the free throw line more than anybody else. Like, if you say to me, Purdue gets all the calls, Zach Eady's officiated unfairly, I immediately know that you don't know ball. That's just my assumption. Uh, let me go back and say this. If you don't like Zach Eady, then you shouldn't be watching college basketball because it isn't a nicer kid in college basketball. I mean, he's just as nice of a kid as DJ Burns is. And I've, mm -hmm. I've been around both of those guys. I obviously know DJ Burns. A little different. Their personalities are different, but you guys know when we're around Zach Eady and you talk to him, he lights up. And he has way more personality yes. than what he shows. He, he's legitimately a he's a he's a gentle giant, is what he is. Um, but he's he's a dominant player. He's a throwback player, so it's not pretty, and it's not what people nowadays are accustomed to seeing. So you don't know what to make of it. He's the most dominant player in in the, in the game, and he dominates it on both ends of the floor. And I've told you guys this before. I think he should have been he you know he should be in the, in the, the um more in the conversation for a defensive player of the year because I think he controls the paint when he's there. Now you try to pull him out in ball screens and you're taking jump shots. He's getting point blank layups. He's gonna punish your big. If you if you front him, he's gonna walk you up the line, they're gonna throw it over, you got no help. And if you double him, he's throwing it over the top and the other guys are getting in. Tennessee tried to say, hey, stay home, you go one on one. And he did, and he started dominating that. Then when he fouls your guys out, then you got to you're forced to, to rotate, trap, do all those other things. I thought the game flipped when Tennessee went up. I think it was thirty two twenty one, and mm -hmm. they, they blew it. I thought they blew it then, because you lost the lead at the, before the half. I mean that lead went so quick, right. and I'm saying to myself, "Wow, you know you're not going to get enough possessions in this game." to just walk this team down. I thought that was when the game flipped, and I thought, okay, they got a chance. They at least needed to go into the half with the lead and not and not burn it away as quickly as they did and go down. I, I thought that was just the biggest mistake. That, that I, At that point, I didn't think they would win, and the game ended up being a lot closer. Like I actually thought Purdue was going to walk away with it when they gave that 11-point that lead away. 
Thank you for watching the field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends or check out the description for some other places that you can consume field 68 content.